All this week, we've been reporting from one of the hospitals hardest hit by the coronavirus. Tonight's fourth and final report from the Royal London Hospital in East London. I've been looking at how the NHS is trying to adapt to the new reality of a virus that at the moment has no cure or vaccine and the continuing grief of those in the local community who've been worst affected. This is the story of one hospital and one community in the time of COVID-19. Their harmony in the face of an almighty challenge. What does the future hold for the men and women in and out of uniform? And can the NHS adapt to a new normal way of working with a virus that could be here to stay? We were given unprecedented access to the COVID wards of the Royal London Hospital in the East End. We had permission from all the patients or their families to film. And again, yeah, go, 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 go. We watched the agonizing attempt. This guy is alive, alive. Yeah. to call the family. Yeah. To save Krishna Pillayogan, who was just 55. And we spoke with the nurse, the only person by his side as he slipped away. I just sat on a chair and just held his hand uh, to be with him in that time. Krishna Pillai Yogan was the proud father of four sons, including Nith, here on his graduation day. He wanted to speak to us about his dad. Hi. I only got married last year. Um, so, you know, it's been one year and a bit. Um, so yeah, so, yeah. And so that I guess you know that was again you know who none of us would have thought you know this time last year you know in all that kind of happiness uh, this something like this would have happened actually so um, you have to try and move on um, I think that's going to be the hardest thing for the first few weeks months he was only two and a half weeks shy of his 56th birthday actually so uh, so yeah he didn't even make it to that yeah. But Trevor Smith has lived to see another summer, his 65th. His voice box is no longer silent. For weeks, his life hung from a plastic tube inserted into his throat to provide the supply of oxygen his body needed that COVID-19 had choked off. Yeah, many times I thought I would die. Especially when you get the breathing. He can't breathe properly. I had many, many thoughts of even, you know, trying to kill myself. Because that was becoming a lot bad decision I had to make. Because my success was not going to go anywhere. So I had to do something to, to leave the body and my wife and son. Trevor survived after being in the deepest and darkest of places. Now the sun is shining. But when will the sun shine for us as a nation? When can our collective mourning begin? All the deaths have so far been wrapped up in charts and graphs. Close to 40,000 are dead. But this pandemic isn't about numbers. It's about people. For veteran consultant trauma surgeon Martin Griffiths, it's the humanity of the NHS in this pandemic that's now attracting scores of new recruits. People are running towards it. The medical students are running towards the hospital to become healthcare support workers and become doctors, to start their training early. We have to turn people down who want to commit to support the effort, and there was kindness everywhere. The NHS is thriving for now. There are even two new gleaming floors at the Royal London for possible COVID patients. But what about cancer screening or heart disease? Many who are sick in the community have stayed away, worried they might catch the virus. Hello, sir. Good morning. Intensive care consultant Nick Bunker 
wants them back. All the people who would normally have presented here with ailments, where are they? I suspect some of them are, you know, have died. Some of them uh, are at home. For cancer, we've not been doing a lot of diagnostics. So if you're not doing the diagnostics, you don't pick up the early cancer with the few symptoms that people have early on. And so perhaps we're just not detecting it. It's still out there. The fervent hope, as the lockdown eases, is that people will drift back to the NHS for whatever hurts them. And the service will be able to help everyone if we help ourselves. There are friends and there are colleagues who we know who are dying and are sick. People I care about have been lost to the coronavirus. And you can't overstate how simple measures are having a huge effect. I know it's boring, I know it's challenging, but look at it from my perspective. You know, I don't need to see any more dead people. What happens to the NHS now the clapping stopped? Will the reverence and esteem wane? Will the extra funding dry up? Whatever happens, the commitment of the men and women we came across at the Royal London won't transform, because this is personal. Working to help the community they serve is part of a deeper reward. Sitting in your car going to work, and when you think to yourself, am I this is what I want to do with my life. And the answer is yes, absolutely. This is the one time I need to stand up and do my job. This is the one time I absolutely have to be there. The final report there in our series from the Royal London Hospital in East London. The producer was Sam Peranti and the cameraman David McElveen.